Alright guys, um, this is um, a different kind of video I'm going to do. Uh, basically what I'm going to do um, is like sum up what I thought of the Six Nations rounds. Um, and yeah, um, a lot of you may disagree with me, some of you might agree with me, but um, again it's just another thing that I can do that can keep me sane. Um, so what I thought I'd do is I'm going to start with the France-Italy match. Obviously ended up with France winning 34-17. Um, a much higher scoring game than I expected. Uh, I thought actually it was a very, very scrappy game. Um, but I think it, kind of everyone thought France was going to win. Um, and... Like it was pretty obvious anyway um, during the game that they deserved to win anyway. Um, they dominated all the stats. 565 meters made compared to 345 um, from Italy. 63% possession compared to Italy's 37. 66% ter percent territory compared to 34. And then the one that really does it, or the two two stats that really do it for me is. Um, Italy having to make 203 tackles out of an attempted 227 and um, France making 77 tackles out of 94 now obviously Italy have the higher percentage there but you know that massive di difference in how many tackles you're having to make it like anyone who has played rugby before even not at a high level you realise that not having the ball and having to defend for long periods of time saps your energy a lot more than it does when you have the ball. Um, although saying that, um, I think getting onto the England game, we see a bit of a difference there. Um, my the other stat that really tells it is actually sixteen percent, uh, sixteen penalties conceded by Italy compared to France's seven. Now, obviously, when it comes to penalties conceded, the more you concede the harder the more penalties you concede the harder it is for you to win the game obviously that's going to be the case um, but this is kind of a tale that has really been consistent with the Italian rugby team I think you realise that in every game that they play in there is a poor discipline um, and you know they had the one yellow card as well but poor discipline is, is really something that runs through um, the Italian rugby team at the moment. Uh, obviously, Conor O'Shea is going to be trying to get that down a bit. Um, I do think he's actually doing a really good job with Italy, and he's um, he's bringing some really good players in. Um, and yeah, I I really like what he's doing, but it's still going to be a long time until they get their club rugby sorted out. Um, I don't think having two teams doing well in the um, top 14 is going to be enough. They need more teams in there um, or at least more players in different teams um, that, are, that are doing well because at the moment they're just not good enough. Even, like I said, um, on Friday or, Saturday, or fr Thursday or Friday, um, substitutes are a big thing and if you haven't got the, pl the um, calibre of player coming off the bench... Um, then obviously you're at a disadvantage because the fresh legs are a massive part of it and they just don't have the quality coming off the bench. Um, I really like, um, uh, what's his name, Tommaso Allen, their 10. I think he's really quite a good player, but again, he's a bit, he can be erratic at some at, at times and maybe to... to um, a detriment but yeah I thought Bassero played really well obviously got man of the match um, I actually thought um, Camara the uh, the back rower for France was a massive part of them doing well as well um, yeah so there were some positives for the French but obviously we have to take it as they are playing it Italy however it does make me a bit more nervous for the England game England France game just because I think the French are so unpredictable, um, and after a win, a, a win that they really needed, they and and the way England performed 
on Saturday, I think we're in real danger of being being tipped over there. So, um, yeah, nervous times ahead for that. Um, now, the next game uh, was obviously um, Wales-Ireland. Uh, now, I again, a higher scoring game than I expected. Um, but... I think, you know, you you can't talk about that game without talking about the uh, the inception pass that Gareth Anscombe threw in the last, you know, in in added time. Effectively, um, you just can't be throwing a pass like that. It was it, when the ball's in the air for that for that amount of time. It gives you such an e- it gives the opposition such an easy time. Um, to predict where it's going and, and to potentially intercept. So, um, yeah, I thought Ireland were the better team. Wales obviously picked up um, picked up some momentum going going into the end, especially with that. Um, I think it was Steph Evans. Um, yeah, in the seventy seventh minute. Um, but overall, I actually thought Ireland were the better team. I thought they kicked better. I thought they just played better territory. Um, that was kind of made in the in the in in the stats. I mean, seventy five percent territory for Ireland um, really tells you all you need to know. And sixty nine percent possession, losing a game with that much difference in in possession and territory is just not something the Irish do really. Um, 454 meters made com- or run compared to 257 for the Welsh. Um, yeah, I think there were actually some real positive signs for the for the Welsh though. Steph Evans looked really really strong, um, and I thought that there were they they actually played really well. But again, it's another game where they're having to make so many tackles. Um, and it's a bit like the England game. They were having to defend for long periods of time. Um, so 208 tackles compared to Ireland 77. It's just not... It's, it's not. You're not able to win a game with that, especially when you're conceding nine penalties compared to the four from the Irish. So um, not really a big surprise with considering the stats. Um, but it was an exciting game to watch. I really enjoyed it. It was a really good game. Um the France Italy game was very scrappy and kind of um un- I think like the predictability of Italy just made it re- kind of a boring game to watch um but this game really kind of made this it was the best game all weekend I think um internationally anyway um yeah I really really enjoyed it um but that lack of discipline for the nine penalties is again something that's becoming a theme for not just these teams like Italy, Wales, again France are notorious for giving away penalties, um, but France, I, w- I would say I still think um, France's best player is Girardo. Their their captain um, is just incredible. I think he's an, one of the world's best hookers. He's world class. Um, monstrous in the in in defense and like huge in a, in attack as well he brings so much like versatility he's quick for his for his position he's strong and he's just got a really good um like leadership about him i think he leads by example which is something the french really needed uh, obviously didn't pay off with their eight players being dropped but eight players being dropped and still coming away with the winners is pretty good um i actually thought george north played well when he came on as well for the for the Welsh. she's always going to be a dangerous player even when he's not playing well for northampton he still plays well for wales so um i know he came back from for northampton like two weeks ago um and then obviously back into the uh, or before the england game and then back into the squad um yeah, so 
that was a really good game. Uh, I think Ireland for the Grand Slam is probably going to be the outcome. Um, they just look as they as they always do, um, like the most stable for uh, out of all the nations. I think they they look the most consistent. Um, they look to be making the least mistakes. They look to have the best attack. Obviously, with Conor Murray and Johnny Sexton, in my opinion, the best 9-10 partnership in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and I actually think that not having Ben Young's made a massive difference to the way George Ford played. I thought Danny Kerr had a bit of an off day. He was really slow with his, his game, but we'll get onto that in a minute. Um, yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting going forward to see um, to see what the Welsh do with um, with the 10 position. Um, I know everyone will say, oh, well, Dan Big is a Lion. He went on the Lions tour for a successful Lions tour. He's got to be in there. Um, but I th just think they need someone with a better temperament at 10. When you've got a leader of the game, I think temperament is massive. And he is someone who, if things aren't going his way, he throws his toys out of the pram. And, and uh, I think that can that can trickle down into the rest of the team. Um, so his strops and his... His... Uh, his issues with uh with the way he talks to referees and the way he um he acts kind of um when th when he doesn't get the call he wants i think are um are probably not the best for the welsh team um and again it probably it probably um it doesn't help um, someone like Alan Wynne Jones, who's trying to captain the side, um, who's very good at talking to referees and very good at kind of keeping his cool. I think having a ten who's meant to be leading the squad as well behind you, throwing his toys out the pram is not is not good. Um, yeah. So I'll be interested to see if they if they try and get Rhys Patchell in. I know he didn't have the greatest game against England, but again. I think Eddie Jones is able to get into his head. Ah, uh, right. Moving on to the game that I absolutely hated. Uh, England Scotland was the worst England performance um, I've seen under Eddie Jones. Um, I think. Uh, just the predictability of our attack was unbelievable and I think uh, a lot of people I was very wrong in that I thought the 9-10 axis of uh, uh, this, sorry 10-12 axis of forward and foul was going to have a, a big impact I thought um, George Ford was nowhere to be seen it didn't, do, didn't necessarily do anything wrong but didn't do anything that was kind of um, great either Owen Farrell missed a couple of key tackles that go and persistently trying to go high on players that are bigger than him and it just means he gets shrugged off tackles um, it, it just for me he, he did it with Hugh Jones when they made the break for the um, I think it was for the for Hugh Jones's first try Hugh Jones made a break first to set up a rock and then it, it was just it was really really predictable play from England there was no reaction to to the Scots starting as fast as they did it was just kind of panic um the back line that normally looks so electric were average at best Mike Brown um, took a couple of good high balls, but um, 
nothing special. Anthony Watson was probably the best one of the backs. Um, just because he's so electric when he gets the ball. Johnny May, he tries really hard. He puts in a lot of effort. Made stupid mistakes. Gave away a stupid penalty. Um, you know, coming off his feet over the ball at the ruck. Um, and now a lot of people, and I've seen on like Facebook and stuff, a lot of people, a lot of Englishmen are complaining about like uh, the, the refereeing being an issue. But you've got to adapt to the referee. We like Nigel Owens was refereeing the, the game in a certain way. Um, there were inconsistencies in there, but you cannot blame the referee for that bad of a performance. It was, it was really, really terrible. And what amazes me is actually the stats from it. Um, you know, 420 metres run compared to 414 from the Scots. Obviously not a massive difference there. 214 passes compared to Scotland's 153. Now there was one stage late in the game where England were just trying to trundle forwards. They were just giving it for to the forwards off 10 letting them smash up and then when they tried to go to the backs there was no momentum there at all um, it looked like all the energy had gone the backs weren't looking to go forwards they were just passing the ball before they'd even moved um, there was no attempt to get over the gain line which is what you need to do in rugby you need to get over the gain line otherwise you're not going to win the game um, Yeah, it was just, it was, and we looked predictable. It was just passing the ball around without moving, and there was nothing that came of it. 56% possession to England and 57% ter territory. How do you have both those stats in your favour and you don't win the game? We had to make less tackles than Scotland, obviously having more possession, and still lost the game. Um, penalties conceded, 13 way too many any time you get into double figures anyway for penalties is too many to get that many against a Scottish team that were obviously playing well on the day and have one of the best goal kickers in the Northern Hemisphere and Greg Laidlaw you just can't afford to give that stuff all, those penalties away and it was stupid penalties that Courtney Laws with a kicking the ball out of the nine's hand um, he knows he can't do that. It's been made illegal. Um, scrums and lineouts. There was really nothing to say about e any of it because it was just, it was stable, but there was no dominance there. The dominance that we thought England were going to have really wasn't wasn't there. I think um, the finishers um, made an impact in the scrum. Uh, I'm trying to think of a performance that was that was decent. I thought Joe Launchbury played well, um, but again gave away a couple of stupid penalties. Um, obviously England's top tackler, um, Sam Underhill's stupid yellow card uh, had pff, not the impact I thought it was going to have, which was good. But when you are chasing the game from, from, you know, two tries or whatever, yeah, uh, two tries down, three tries down, you know, Scotland scored all their tries in the first half and you're chasing the game from there. Um, so, yeah, I think it was just... Uh, Really poor, poor performance from England. Um, I think Eddie Jones is probably going to have to look at the mentality because I think England just thought they were going to turn up and win and walk away with it and that would be that. Um, or at least that's what it looks like, looked like. There was a, a, a kind of lack of energy from the start or what looked like a lack of energy from the start a lack of enthusiasm about the game um, 
and then when we tried to do stuff, we tried to do much. What amazed me actually was kicks from hand. There, there was so much kicking in this game. Um, 27 kicks from hand for Scotland and 24 for England. And I actually thought we kicked when we didn't need to kick. We were kicking possession away. I thought Danny Kerr's kicking was terrible. Um, I thought he produced too much slow ball. I think people underestimate how much having Ben Youngs and George Ford, who have played together at club level, club level, um, how how much of a difference that makes. Um, so I think not having um, Ben Youngs, sorry Ben Youngs and and um, George Ford. I think not having Ben Youngs there is a massive a massive deal. I, I, I don't understand why Dan Robson hasn't been chosen. I think he would have been a, a more m- more of a spark. Um, he would have provided a lot of go forward, a lot of kind of um, quickness and speed to the game. Um, Eddie Jones seemed to be persistent in not picking him. So, um, And we all know that Eddie Jones isn't affected by the media, so even if he was slated for not picking Dan Robson, um, he's not really going to take any notice, is he? Um, but yeah, the kicks. The I actually thought England kicked when we didn't need to kick, and then when we did need to kick, we didn't kick. I thought there were times where um, a little grubber through down the wing would have been a really good option that would have that England normally take or England like even Jonathan Joseph is pretty good at putting those grubbers through but they weren't using it they weren't using these kind of tactics it was just it was a real lack of of decision making you saw at one point during the game where Owen Farrell just looked lost in midfield he got the ball and it just kind of stood still went to go one way, stopped, kind of looked the other way and no one knew what he was going to do and there was no one providing a, a go forward um, option off him. So, uh, yeah, it was a terrible game to watch if you're an England fan. Great for Scotland. I thought Scotland played really well, but we were abysmal. Um, obviously, congratulations to Scotland because it's been a long time coming. Um, for them to win win back the Calcutta Cup. Um, I think England start need to start realising that um, how much teams want to beat them. Being second in the world is a big deal. Scotland celebrated like they'd won the World Cup after they'd won the Calcutta Cup. Um, and that isn't meant to be taking, taking the mickey and, and putting a downer on Scotland. It, it, I think it just shows how much people want to beat England now. Um, it is a big deal when you're number two. So when you're a number two side in the world, now I think a team like Ireland believe they should be number two in the world anyway. So if that were to happen, I don't think you'd see the celebrations. But um, yeah, I think England start need to start realizing that everyone is trying to beat them. It is all always about beating the best team in the tournament. Um, it's obviously about winning the tournament, but in inside that you want to beat the best team or the best ranked team. And England have always had a target on their back, but it, but now being so highly ranked has put an even bigger target on their back. Um, I think Ireland will go above England in the world rankings um, after the Six Nations because I think Ireland will win the Grand Slam. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's going to be an interesting game next week, Ireland-Scotland. I believe Ireland will win it, um, just because their kicking game is superior. Um, they've got some really exciting players. Jacob Stockdale looked really good. Farrell, they're 13, I think. Um, who had come in for Robbie Henshaw. He was immense. Um, Obviously got man of the match. He was incredible. I thought he was dominant in defence and just 
tore through people and attack. Um, even the players that like Ireland having have coming off the bench, I don't think we've seen the best. We haven't seen much of Joey Carberry on coming off the bench, obviously because Johnny Sexton's there. But I think if he came on, he could make a real difference. Provides a lot of pace. Um, controls. I think he controls the game very well, especially for someone um, quite young. Uh, you know that Ireland are just are just the team to beat at the moment. I think uh, they are the best team in the Six Nations, um, in my opinion. Uh, not just because of their personnel, but just because of the way they're playing. Um, they've obviously got a very very good coach, um, and England have a lot of work to do. So um, I would be very interested to see the France game. I'm very nervous for it. Um, so um, it'll be interesting to see if France bring back all the people that they've dropped um, or if they leave a couple out or if they leave all of them out. Um, I think it was a statement to be made about discipline off the pitch. Um, probably one that needed to be made and I kind of... I, I was... Um, I thought it was a really good message to send to the rest of the French team and it it will probably put off any... Um, indiscretions in in the future. So, yeah, um, England need to make some changes. Um, I think they need to try and be less. Uh, it may have just been an off week. Um, I don't know. Uh, it it may just be that 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 uh, occasion got to them um, I think the Scots were very very excited about the game obviously being at home um, the crowd sounded I wasn't there obviously but the crowd sounded really loud um, yeah so um, sorry it's been such a long video but basically just my my review of the of the um, weekend's international rugby um, for the Six Nations so I've got to try and find up like a name for this um, video uh, but yeah I think a lot of people may disagree with me but who cares it's just my opinion um, yeah so lots of work for England to do Ireland on a high Scotland coming in with lots of momentum. That looks to be a very good game. Ireland, Scotland, France, England will be interesting if the French turn up. Um, they've shown that they can create something out of nothing. That's um, that's something that they've always they always they always were able to do and lost for a bit, but appear to be able to get it back. Um, and then. Um, Italy Wales uh, is probably a bit of a foregone conclusion to be honest with you I think uh, Wales will be too strong so yeah two weeks and that will be my next video on this